Hey everybody, Sato Chi here, and welcome back to another 2 s video. Today, we are going to take a look at the developer block for 3 of Saber, their plans for 2021. So basically, this is like a roadmap of what it plans so far to fix 3 of Saber. Also, there will be a multiple different translation. There will be one available in my Discord, but also on K2S platform version 5.0. Both of them are basically the same, but different wording based on the official version from 3 of Saber with an IMC game. So if anything, I'm going to do the official version in this videos compared to the translation that I did in my Discord, but also the on the K2S forum version 5.0. Also, I do want to shout out to Ishigami from the Discord for doing the translation for this past as early as possible. The community is really appreciate for your hard work and thank you very much so with that being said let's go ahead and jump right into the introduction now because three of saber is a performing team based content and shared equipment with a team farming has been completely one set of equipment per account thus the equipment and crafting fee for the equipment has been set very high as a result the launch of new item and gen and balance has been greatly affect the game and everyone knows that the barrier that new return players users have to overcome have become higher and higher over the past update now this is quite true by the way because if you look back to the silver removal updates that's kind of killed all the new and returning players because they don't know where to get a silver except for main channel mode. and channel mode become the main resources of getting silver and people would just make multiple art character of the same build so for example i'm using the critics drew and pds i would make multiple critics drew and pds of a character and share my equipment to those characters just to do auto channel mode which becomes a you know <laughs> some people say it's like becoming a mobile games kind of thing on pc but it is what it is, actually. Now, consider this side effect, they believe that the team-based approach has failed. So for now on, 3 of Saber aim to be a character-based like games. The following are the essential conditions to fulfill the goal and the development team aim to achieve them. So there will be seven of them, character-based growth system for the first one, class adjustment, arcade content, fuel content, PV team organization, scenario expansion for episode 13-2 and episode 14, adjustment for achievement system and guild channel. Now we're going to start off with a catcher base score system. This is really interesting, by the way. Now, early Drift Saver has the individual number of play in content per character. So if you think about that, back in the day, we actually had an entry legend rate for Belcarver per character. So people would form silver from that, but also they shared equipment along with the team, which is pretty interesting. You just need to make a all catcher and form Belcarver back in the day by having the equipment from your, basically your main character. Now, fostering many catcher with the same builds class with the higher efficiency, for example, like I mentioned before, Quivix, PD, and Drew, has led to an enormous difference in goods like Christian with fostering a few catcher to a higher level. Third, we have adjusted the entry cards as a team base, which make everybody, every single catcher, to kind of share the entry for the legendary, but also many other content as well, so that user can focus on fostering a few character. But due to the excessive equipment cost for the equipment, this lead to reduced motivation to try various class builds. Hurdle that new users had to reach become extremely high, and scale of the premium sale and events to overcome these become larger. That we think is lead user to become a big loss. So let me go ahead and give you guys an example. For example, the Arbor Day packages. I believe more of you guys already seen this package. This is the concept of pay to win. For example, the first package, of the Oak package, which costs like 688 TP. They're gonna give you a full seven of this night equipment, plus 16 trans 10 for the weapon, and plus 11 trans 10 for the armor. You also get a Vibor scroll for your main weapon and stuff weapon as well. And there'll be the armor set scroll for the weapon, armor, etc. You also get the botanic necklace and braces. So a bunch of these other stuff can actually really benefit your character and the total cost of getting everything from this one is like cost around one billion up to two billion silver of investment to this game so if anything this is the concept of pay to win as i mentioned earlier and you also get a bunch of other stuff by the way there is other package as well which you can buy the maximum of tools the arbitrary chest package just give you the botanic upgrade scroll for your botanic accessory all the way up to level 460. You also get Ruby and Bill enchantment coupon. This is a lot of enchantment coupon away. This is worth almost 500 million silver. And you can buy two of these. And to be honest, there is actually a content that should use this enchantment coupon, like upgrading your equipment, but also upgrading your, I believe, the guillotine gems and crowns and such. But yeah, this is a lot of silvers. You can buy two of the package. And then there'll be the package for the Arbor Day Pines package, which give you like... Oh my god, channel mode reset, singular reset, you also get a dungeon, token, etc, repair kits. There are so much for this one, and you can buy it up to 10 times. So that is like 300 CM reset, 200 singular reset. So if you do all this, that's 
gonna give you almost like 500 million silver not to count ding the all the equipment like the powders the identified equipment that you get from the channel modes or maybe singularity and maybe you have a chance of getting by bora and you can sell it off for the market you can actually make almost a billion silver by just buying all this package and this costs like 378 tp but if anything you get the point here the point is that 70 package is completely paid to win if i'm going to mention about the last packet this is an update jerry package which you get wave potion as well you also get the identified music time to upgrade your catcher art skill yeah this is this is too much pay to win anyway back to the developer nope again the new goddess ring equipment system will focus on catcher base again and the cheaper acquisition fee for the equipment will allow us to expand our common class and not mass produce the same catcher with the same class builds so basically this is goddess ring equipment after legendary we are planning to distribute the catcher base usage and account base usage according to the reward for not only newly added content but also existing content which is the current content right now for three of savior now, this is the correct comparing to team based farming, which is the legendary, and catcher based farming, which is the cost screen. For the legendary, it's going to be more focused on whatever you do, like White Wish or Bell Copper, Morning Pony, etc. And once you get the material, you fully craft your legendary. But for the goddess one, you have to obtain the material over time and just kind of work your way all the way to the top for the bottoms. So, the difficulty of farming for each catcher will decrease rather than focus on one catcher, like now, because decrease in difficulty of fostering of the catcher and farming is also the key purpose of this update. But we are to adjust the way of playing mass producing the same class builds, which occur due to sharing equipment with the team as follows. So the cost of preparing equipment for each character and each content will have a suitable entry count to prevent free rise when playing the content. Now, to be honest, uh, I actually read this ahead of time, and they actually gonna make Goddess Great equipment as a catcher bounce, so you can actually not, not share this equipment compared to legendary. But they also give you an option to convert your legendary into Goddess Great. All right, so on to 1-1, which is Goddess Equipment. With the new system, Goddess Rays, that you can obtain Goddess Ring weapons, armor, and material to craft and enhance those items will be updated. Goddess Equipment in Ray will have the following property to convert as a catcher-based system. Goddess Ray will provide entry by catcher base. Goddess Equipment is a catcher bounce equipment, as I mentioned before. Goddess Ray can be played only when you have Goddess Equipment. So there is no way you can enter Goddess Ray without having Goddess Equipment. Now, because there is only legendary equipment that can share as a team, you can convert your level 440 legendary equipment, Samuel this night or Kalisha Legendary, with A or above Transcendence without any expense. Also, you can convert your equipment with transient legendary equipment and some of the current enchantment and enchant option to inherit the goddess great equipment. So technically, you have a few options here. To be honest, uh, if you want to keep your legendary equipment or you can just convert it into goddess great, either one is fine to be honest. But if you want to do the goddess great, you need goddess great equipment. So as of right now, if you can craft another set of the legend glacier, so you can share between character and do auto CM, that would be fine as well. And considerable you obtain by cleaning the new rake with the goddess equipment can be trade via market like her Plasia and use add variety to say including crafting goddess equipment. Now just in case her Plasia has the activation where you convert it into the refined version and the refined version is basically untradeable. Alright, so onto 1 1 1 enchantment and transcendence. God equipments had different average enchantment values, performing values increased by the enchantment, and the chance of success in enhanced with the legendary equipments. You need appropriate items for the race as material for enchantments. Current golden view and ruby view will apply with a separate usage and performing according to the system. Goddess equipment is a catcher bounce. Let me repeat this again because I just want to make sure that you understand what's the difference between legendary and goddess equipment. Goddess equipment is a catcher bound, so you cannot transfer to the storage or to another catcher. And the enchantment value does not decrease even when failing on the enchantment, which is a good thing. You can actually get plus 40 goddess equipment, which is really nice by the way. Thus, there is no potential. Content about the sockets are below, which I'm going to cover that a little bit on. Chain of success in enchantment is also different applied to high chance in low enchantment stage, decreased chance as the enchantment stage increase. Also, the chance of success in the current state will increase when failing in the same stage, so technically this is actually really good 
For the players who are using goddess great equipment, the enchantment value does not decrease when you fail. And every time you fail, you have a higher chance of upgrading your equipment next time you try to upgrade it. So there's a possibility that people might go plus 40 and above and beyond. So this is actually really good. Now, the reason why different enchantment systems are applied is that for now, there are high economical mental requirements to reach certain value like plus 16 or plus 21. And the enchantment value becomes very low due to high risk. Now, let me explain what high risk means. If you use golden view between plus 15 or plus 14 and you fail, it go back to plus 10. Same with ruby and view. Ruby and view, if you're trying to get plus 21 and you fail somewhere between plus 19 and 20, you go back to plus 15. So it becomes very frustrated for people with zero potential and they keep trying to get plus 21 and they can never get it. Now, it's not easy to restore when reaching a certain point, which is true. We think that the new system will be much better than the current system by consistently trying to enhance little by little every time you have the consumable, which will decrease the mental hurdles and maintain the motivation player to continuously play the content. All right, so onto the transcendent and set status. This is actually really important for the goddess great equipment. The performance and the cost difference between zero transcendent and transcend is so great that it's particularly meaningless to use the equipment before the equipment reaches transcendent ten. In fact, a lot of goddess blessings are consumed in this process. This also applies for the set status as well because for the set equipment, you need at least six pieces to make it work, which only lead to increasing a hurdle to operate the first equipment as I said before. Goddess equipment transcend fee will decrease by 20 to 25% as before, 30% for performance, and in permaculture solution needed for the set status will be decreased by 20 to 25%. So, Belinda, Serenity, Ready T, and Cherries will be the set status as usual. When equipping one or two part of the growing goddess part, this is actually really interesting by the way because it will have the equal effects that it grants to the same status as the previous Lynchard equipment. So, what I can see here is that it might be possible that you will get the salt set effect for having one or two pieces, and then you can mix it up with Belinda, Serenity, or maybe Cherries as well. So, if I'm correct, then it's possible to have three different set effects on the goddess grade equipment because you have four for the armor and one for weapon and one for sub weapon that is six in total when you can divide it by two you get three different set effects for the C category they are changing auto swap system into a dual weapon slot system this is actually really interesting by the way because auto swap optimus have performed many times in a short period than any other game which affect the server performance because one machine managed a lot of session it was not easy to reach a satisfied speed not only in tgw where a lot of players are in but also solo in party raid mission now this example right here is a little bit confusing but i'm pretty sure that most of you guys have already used auto swap before by using rc on your keyboard or using a hockey to auto swap your weapon imc also limited the weapon swap for the new system which is an automatic version for channel modes but also guillotine wire wars and bug ray for the goddess equipment the existing of two pair of the main and sub weapon slot will always be activated for the dual slot system so that all the option of the two set will always apply without mechanical swap if different tree is equipped there the skill activation immediately when at least one of the condition of each skill is required to satisfy all the status values are added attack and defense are applied as the average of the two set of the equipment Two set is needed to be equipped there because if the slot is empty, the attack and defense is applied as zero. But what I understand is that this only apply for goddess great equipment. They did not mention anything about the legendary equipment. All the status values are added, and the attack and defense are applied at the average of two set of equipment. So, for example, right here, where Solomon's Doppler, Rodos, Barbarian with two hand sword and trinket in slot A, and sword and shield on slot B. Rodero shooting star must have a shield and will be cast immediately without swap. So technically, if you're using a class that requires shield or different weapons, and if you have it on a slot B, those will apply immediately without having to swap to you that skill. So that's really good, by the way. However, this character has a lower attack than usual of two-hand build because of the one-hand sword and the shield. IMC also claimed that it is true that the weapon and sub weapon number of slot increase from 2 to 4, but the burning of settings will be minimized. The legend set, which a total of 6 pieces, requires twice of the crafting and magic fee of the two types of weapon and the four type of the armor, whereas the goddess set, which is a total of 8 pieces, wear the same crafting and magic fee for the armor and the weapon. In addition, two goddess weapon selection box will be provided at the same time as the goddess update to support the additional of slot, and after that, you will not be able to to equip or unequip weapon while in combat. This dual weapon slot system will lead to a wider build combination than now, not only with the original removal of the swap lab, but also with the common class system that will be introduced later, and a less hard setting fee based on the character. 
Next is going to be the status system for the goddess equipment. Only one type exists, unlike legendary equipment, which has two types and random status is load itself just like Sephiroth's type. To use various random status like Inker Chain of the Legenda, you can save it as a snapshot by using a newly added engraved function. After configuring the four options that you want to engrave in them, you are saved in the capture information. And it is say you can chain only one or two specific status and engrave them again to increase the preset. Specific consumable is needed when engraving and this activate by chains like the existing Inker Extraction System. Silver Inker Extraction Kit, Golden Inker Extraction Kit can be used as a sub-material to increase the chance to succeed in engraving. Basically, a certain number of preset slots will be provided, but a certain pay to server will be set to increase the number of presets and kit a maximum number of presets. So basically, random status will only be used for the legendary equipment, while the engraving system will apply for the goddess great equipment. Now, fixed Inca options such as by Bora and goddess and demon gods will be applied with a separate system called the Inca Storage. Details are in the 1-2 Team Bow Equipment Inca Storage and a few retributions, which is the basic status of Samuel this night and Clash Legenda equipment, will be changed as a basic attribute applies when equipping goddess armor as the form of the goddess armor mastery. Next is going to be Gym Socket. The maximum number of Goddess Armor Gym Socket is going to be 2. And only Skill Gym can be equipped. In. Only up to 3 Color Gym can be equipped in with a weapon and sub weapon, and 2 Seal Gym Socket is added. A separate method is required to open the Seal Gym Socket, and the gyms are higher than the existing Color Gyms can be equipped in. with a chain of the Enhancement System or the Goddess Ring equipment. Gym Socket can be managed regardless of the potential. I'm actually gonna look forward to it because back in the day, the only armor that had two socket was Loro Panther or Sumiki. So I'm actually really excited for the new gym socket for the Goddess Grey armor. On to the team bound equipment and Inker Source. It is difficult to set a multiple characters only with the decrease in the crafting cost of the Goddess weapon and armor. The high tier of Arch accessory Inker specialized to specific class gimmicks is applied as limitation. Storage system is added to prevent this. When you activate each item in the storage provided, each character can create and use it at any time. Items created by the storage are character bounds and can be crafted additionally. The free required to activate each item in storage will be set inexpensively according to the bounty system. So the following items can be managed by the storage system, which include Vibora Weapon Inker, Demon God Goddess Armor Inkers, Lucifer Accessory, which include Necklace and Bracelets and Art. All the item above is currently in possession and will be returned 100% to fully reconfigurable materials. Starting with the A category, which is the art and the accessory storage, 20% of the previous copy fee is needed to open the art. Character can create level 1 art via storage. Each art can level up in the same method, but the fee required to level the art is set at 20% compared to the previous fee. Accessory storage is provided for the Luciferian Reigns. Material needed to open each type is 30% of the previous crafting fee. And like the art, each character can create and use any set of the open Luciferian, which is really nice, by the way. When the Luciferian accessory are returned, the scroll from the current enchantment value and potential will be provided together. If you use this scroll to ban Luciferian daily extract for the storage, the enchantment and potential value will be transferred. So if anything, if you don't have the art yet, you definitely want to wait until the system come out and let you craft the art, which is like 30% of the original fee. That is super nice, by the way. Same goes with the Lucifer accessory. Also, if you already have the current Lucid Fairy or Accessory, the R and Accessory story that is divided into several kinds can be opened by consuming the Essence Level 10 R to consume the R storage. And then Transcending 10 Lucid Fairy Accessory set 3 pieces to open the Accessory storage. Immediately activate every kind of Level 10 R. Transcend Lucid Fairy set after opening, each character can create character bound, by the way, and use any kind of art or accessory from their storage. Lucid Fairy Accessory can extract from the current enchantment value and potential information before opening the storage. Enhancement and potential values are transferred when using scroll on a newly extracted bound Lucifer. Lucifer from which enhancement and potential information is extracted can be completely dismantled and used as goods or salt. Bound Luciferis are created from story is still a legend ring, but it will become the basic material for the Goddess Reigns accessory via future update. And some of the enhancement values will also enhance like armor and weapons. Goddess Grey accessory will also be able to open socket for relic black gems. Also, you are able to open the socket that can equip the rest relic black gem to the Goddess Ring accessory. The expansion of our maximum level is yet here, but after the expanded level, the considerable field will set low based on the character bounce. Okay, here's my opinions on the Goddess Ranks accessory. 
This is a huge game changing, by the way. If you think about champ lane, the class need a lot of additional damage. And if you have a lot of black gym additional damage for the goddess version, you can equip it onto the goddess ring accessory, would give you so much more damage and benefit. Not to mention the fact that if you're playing Kush Shader, you just need holy gems on all your accessory, would give you more damage. That is insane. <laughs> If anything, this is actually a really good chain for the arts as well as the accessory storage. Alright, so onto the Inker stories, the Vivora weapons and goddess and demon gods Inker will return to their previous levels of equipment, transmutator and silver. When transmuting the Vivora, the transmutator and silver will be set as the maximum value regardless of the applied chance. Vivora goddess and demon gods will use by increasing the level of the storage status. That means if you upgrading levitator level 4 and coordinate dagger level 2 in the storage, other character can also grant those level options as well. Also, unlike art and accessory storage, Vivora weapon and the goddess and demon gods inker storage is open without consuming existing inker but does not open all kind at once but has to open separate to use the total amount of consumable needed to open each item is lower than the existing vivor level 4 or goddess and demon gods level 3 and can be set from level 1 Vivora and Goddess and Demon God Inker you possess previously will be returned 100% to the good and silver that was needed when crafted and can be used also to open the Inca option needed for additional character. Funding schedule maintains on April 20. The transmute values of Vivora and Goddess and Demon Gods armors has been changed to 1. So basically, you cannot give great success or plus 2 anymore. Existing fixed Inkers can no longer be equipped with each character Goddess equipment and can be applied only via Inca storage. Turns a usable fixed status for the weapon and armor that can be used before having by board rank status will be provided without any consuming. Additionally, the number and scale of status for two hand weapons and a weapon accessory are expected to be set at the same scale as one hand weapon plus a sub weapon. So the number of scale status for the by board weapon will change with an update of the gut system. Thus, the number of goddess flesh gym and the fee needed for transcending the goddess weapon will be united and limitation on the weapon type chain. Alright, so if you have a level 4 by war along with the Demon and Goddess Inkers, they're gonna give you 100% refund at the moment. So if anything, I don't recommend upgrading your stuff right now because they're gonna give you a refund anyway. Additionally, the transition to the catcher base growth system that they have announced so far is currently being planned and developed. So there's a possibility that the detail may change upon the actual application, but the core goal is to lower the height of psychological and the temporal hurdles in growing and playing multiple kinds of character compared to the present. Besides the equipment and cost investment in the character for the high attributes can apply as an obstacle of growing multiple character. At this point, it is difficult to reduce the cost of high attributes, but first, we are planning to update the future by removing the condition that requires several high attributes of level 20 or more in a certain content. Alrighty, so on to the class adjustment, 3 of Xavier reorganized 4 classes into 5 classes in 2018, during the winter of the rebuild patch, by the way, and chain the class into not only a circle unit, but a class unit. 2-1 chain in the performance and the role of the subclasses. What you need to know from this bunch of text right here is that the development team is in the process to adjust the party subclass skill composition. They plan to gradually shift the importance of the roles in the party play from class attribution to a gimmick selection or item setting so that you can have a minimum independency in any composition. So with that, these are the list of classes. For the Clare Circle, it's going to be the Priest, Deputies, Oracle, Partner, Pattern, Plat Doctor, Kabbalist, Miko, etc. And then some of the classes like Templar, Possessa, Quartermaster, Pi Piper, Appraiser, Thaumaturer, Enchanter, Linker. And we are going to some of the other classes as well, like the Raider, Falconer, Crochet Hunter, etc. So with that, just looking forward to it, to be honest. Next, we have 2-2, Common Class Extensions. So what is going on here is that IMT is actually trying to convert some of the classes that was mentioned before into a common class. A good example would be Deputy because it's very common because a lot of people use Deputy to support with cooldown reduction as well as SP reduction. So it's possible that if the Deputy is select as a common class, Swordsman will be able to build a class including Deputies. And it's possible that maybe Nockmoy, so some of the classes from the Cleric kind of want to play as Nockmoy, like taking Nockmoy and Quisher the Nockmoy would be a very good one as well. So if anything, the detail will be on another posting in the future and will have it on the way with a special event. 
Alrighty, so for number three is gonna be RK content. The development team is playing Jugatry Improver play pattern that is currently focused on the channel mode. So with this one, RK content is using your character and the assister. As you can see here, we already have a bunch of screenshot of the upcoming RK contents. Now, character-based RK content is produced as content that win or lose according to the internal builds and the rules, almost excluding performance of existing character and items. So basically, you don't really need really good item for this one. I think a good example would be the Chimpu Phase Two where it's more focused on your character class build and some of the items that they provided for your character the first character based content is a stage dungeon content where you be distinctive monster at each stage savior can constantly choose and enjoy a variety of attack method through the powerful buffs and upgrades that can be obtained by clearing the stage sometimes you get a powerful hidden buff and clear the stage easily i wonder what kind of buff is that as you progress to the state, you can choose to continue to growing and look at the opportunity to turn around the special lux. In a constant changing situation, player can make a multiple choice. This content can be placed by one of five to player, and we plan to provide seasonal ranking by adding a personal ranking. Next is going to be another arcade contest that heavily focused on the assister, aka Popomon. So it's basically like a Pokemon version of Three of Savior. The current assister play right now is only passive role, with is slightly involved in the character combat ability. But in the new contest, which is under development right now, it play an important role in cooperation and competition among users by combining a multiple assister in various ways. Since it is based on assister, the influence of the character is minimized. But there is a gap that comes from growing the assister itself. But we aim not to require as a key element of competition. We are developing an aim to research and utilizing the combination of synergy between assister by lowering the accessibility away from the character growing. Token of the Goddess will be given as a reward for the new content. Token of the Goddess is a concept of seasonal coin. Token of the Goddess will be consumed in a system such as the Goddess Ring Equipment Enhancement instead of Silver. And new Token of the Goddess will appear when a new season, new equipment and race comes. Token of the Goddess will be mainly provided in the new content rather than the main Silver obtaining area like Chalamos. Token of the Goddess can be purchased by Silver but it is better to obtain by playing the new content. On to number four is going to be additional fuel content. So for dash one is going to be a new hunting grounds. They are preparing a final farming area for the player to reach the high level certifications and require higher entry addition than the existing soul hunts. In this soul hunt, you can obtain material that can open the seal additional socket of the goddess ranks weapons and special gym that you can equip in that socket. So this is really nice, by the way. I kind of wonder what kind of boss we're going to get. For that show, it's going to be a house crafting room. So we are preparing a content that can produce a useful household item by collecting special products. Basically, this is like an alchemist, but in your own personal housing, you have to collect a special product of item from the open world, and you use those items to create or craft a various type of item to the production facility in your own personal housing. If anything, this is actually really, really nice. By the way, as you can see here, there's a bunch of this potion. I don't know about the other two, but if anything, I would like to say some potion that boosts damage for like the plant type, mutant type, insect type, etc. Or maybe potion increase the accuracy and block penetration and then there's some extra potion that restore SP as well. So this could be really nice to bring back the open world experience. Part 5, PvP contents organization. So technically, they are making some changes for GDW as well as at TBL. If anything, TBL, they are planning to modify the number of members, combat maps, the scoring method, as well as the ranking reward per season. So this is really good. And for TTWs, it's being played intentional due to the weakness of the rule. So some of the rules and changes are being reconsidered and being considered. Next is going to be the expansion of scenarios or aka episode quest. We are getting episode 13-2 and episode 14. Oh wow, look at that monarch. Jeez. He looked kind of buff, but he looked pretty corrupted. Sam. It looked like a pirate monarch or something. Look at the eye pass right here. <laughs> and uh, I don't know about this character. This is really interesting. So this is the artwork of the boss and the PC that will be added in the new area. So we are going to fight a I get corrupted demon lore monarchs. On to number 7, which is the last one by the way, they are going to do the adjustment for the achievement system and extension for the guild board function. So 7-1 is going to be adjustment for the achievement system. What you need to know is that the development thing that the current achievement system is lack of UI convenience and does not have the extractive reward except for the title. So what they plan to do is improve the UI and relation system for the achievement after the achievements are integrated in team. The achievement UIs will be separate from the current catcher information from F1 UIs and then integrate with the average internals. And in the long run, the collection will also integrate with that UI. In addition, they are going to add more achievement and more reward. And some of the reward and achievements might be time limited events as such, but if anything, 
looking forward to that one as well all right 7-2 is going to be extension for the guild ball function as you can see here the channel function which has not been updated for a long time now is added to the guild community board the guild master can create the channels and the guild member can participate in the channel so that the guild master can figure out the number of guild members or login status also guild member can visit the channel they are in or the channel they are registered as a shortcuts anyway that is pretty much for this videos yeah it's a little bit long but thank you very much for watching this is strategy once again and i'll see you all in the next video peace out